Thank you, thank you. Please be seated, please be seated. Please be seated. MC. MC, I went to a school where your seniors remain your seniors for the rest of your life. And I respect it a lot because I want my juniors to know that I'm senior for the rest of my life. So when my seniors are seated, you have to limit the way you talk. You know, have them here. Who can still tell me to kneel down here, no matter where I am? So I'm very careful. So I have them here, and they know that I have never failed to respect their seniority. And it is important for our society and for you younger ones to learn. You know, I lived in the UK and uh, I used to go to the House of Parliament and we sit down and see people who are supposedly ministers and everything, they're sitting down and one man walks in with a walking stick and they all stand up. And I said, they tell me who the man was yesterday. So it's part of our step. Let me start by most sincerely thanking my seniors that are here. Using Jarak, Chris Garba, Pato Tommy, Tony Nacheta, of course, my very dear elder brother. When I talk about agriculture in front of him, I'm, I'm very careful before I make one mistake, and he will take me to the cleaners. So I sincerely recognize all of you and thank all of you. And thank you for being here. The reason why I was rushing, I was actually going to Yobe today for a campaign. But unfortunately, to go to Yobe, you need to get permission to land in the airport. And I've been in the airport since uh, 10, waiting for the permission. So when it was about 1, I said, okay, let me go and greet these people while we wait for the permission. Maybe we'll come. So I thank you for this opportunity. What I want to do first is to most sincerely, most sincerely, thank all of you that are gathered here. Support group, I want you to know this. This is your project. You're not supporting Peter. It is your project. It is not my project. Pastor Tommy was in a place yesterday where I told somebody something. An elderly man. I said, for the support the youths are giving to me, if I go there and steal public money, that God should punish me and my children. Because they put their trust in me. That it cannot happen. That when I went to be governor, when I went to be governor and I told people that they didn't believe it, when I was living and I was living one day, I said, listen, I asked God, allow me to correct these children who are not in school so they go back to school. And I'm happy that today, Anna and Bright is not just going to school, they're number one. So let me go home. That this is what I need. It is your grace that will bring me here. To abuse it is the abuse grace of God. It's your project. I could easily go back to there and become a director, anything in a bank, live my life. But I can tell you, this year I've nominated in different companies about seven, six directors. I could easily go back. What am I looking again? I have two kids. Both of them are graduates. And I tell people freely, my son has never taken one hour from me since he graduated. And thank God the party and people were the other day with chairman of Labour Party when I was asking him to take money from me, he said, it's impossible that I made my own money. He wants to make his own. So it's not costing me anything. It's not costing me anything. So it's only one remaining. My daughter, and he teaches, and he doesn't believe in money. So what are you making? The money am I building the next houses for? To use it for what? No. For me, we can make Nigeria work. He has all the factors, all the potentials, everything. When I go to IDP in Benue and see people, 
who have been out of their houses for three years. How can we have a country where people are not at war, but they don't live in their houses? What are you telling them? When I go to Bornu and everything, I see people who are in IDP camp. I ask myself the same question. If there's people in IDP camp, we are in IDP camp. When I see mothers have their children die for hunger, for this, in a country God has so blessed. And then you turn around and see people like me who have stolen everything, moving around, being happy. You know? It's, un it's unfair. So, I thank you. Please, continue this struggle. Don't look at the differences of what you're seeing. At times, maybe Peter didn't greet you. At times, the man is not even respectful. At times, the man is not even this. At times, the man is not this and everything. All I can tell you is that this is your project. See that you are running this election. I have to be the only person that is presented for the election. And that's what I'm pleading for Nigerians. Let's start building a better country. That better country will benefit you, your children, your future. All our country has produced just in the past 10 years is poverty. It's misery. It's insecurity. In 2012, the number of Nigerians that are monetarily poor when the actual poverty is 55 million. Today is 95. So that means in the past 10 years, we did not save one person from poverty. Rather, we doubled it. And nobody cares. And those who cost it are asking to be given more years. To do what? <laughs> what do they want to do with it? In other countries, they will be begging to go out peacefully and alive. But here, they take it as their turn. It's their right. And everybody keeps quiet. And you see people. I was in the plane this morning. And I've told that story to that team this morning. I said, I met a man who told me he has been in Nigerian politics for the past 40 something years. And I said, That's fine. Been in, said, I've been there, Peter. Close to over 45 years, close to 45 years now, but above 40. And I said, Sir, I assume you're seven, over 70. Just this morning, coming from Lagos to Abuja. He said, Yes, he's well over 70. I said, I said, That is actually the problem. He said, What do I mean? I said, Well, our life expectancy is 55. So, You've been lucky that you are above it by about 20 years or, 20 or 15 years. And then, you know, went on and on and on. I was not tell you. This election is a generational change. He said, what? I said, it's time you people leave the stage. Let's see whether we can correct the mess. He said, what? I said, this is time you will leave the stage. Because we cannot continue this way. He showed me, I have documents of who is supporting, supporting one of the main uh, presidential candidates. He gave me his card. He said it there, he wrote it. He's even a DG for one of it. I said, okay. So tell me, this man you're supporting now, what do you think the man will offer Nigeria? He said that is not what is being discussed, Peter. But that as good as your idea is, where is the structure to deliver you? I said, 
I didn't tell him. I didn't tell him that you are the structure. I'm being honest with you. I told him that God will not allow you people to continue. That's what I told him. I said, God will not allow you people to continue. You've been doing this thing for 40 something years. And you want to claim the experience. Nobody claims the experience in failure. Only in Nigeria. Now somebody said, we've been doing it for years. But he failed. How can you claim experience in failure? People claim experience in success. And you failed. And you're telling me, you've been doing it for 40 something years. That's why I said, it's time for you people to go. And that's what we get. That's what we get in our country today. Where somebody has consistently failed. And he's saying, oh, I will still do this. What are you going to do? Absolutely nothing. I told him, I said, listen. We have people who today are protesting for one thing or the other. I agree with them. There might be hardship, like we have a currency redesign and people are not happy and everything, even for the consequences. Even I am not happy that poor people cannot have access to their money. They have not this, they have not that, and everything. But I said to him, with all this my being unhappy, none that our leaders are protesting and going to court. Why didn't, why didn't they do it when students were home for eight months? Why didn't they do it? Or, did, or were they not aware that students were not at home for eight months? And besides, that, I, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that protest because this thing lasted for 100 days. We were given notice. But it also, at the same time, saying, please, for the sake of this country, we have the unbanked, we have the less privileged people, we have those of us who have small deposits. Please allow us to have access to it. Those ones that have big ones, you people like Chelsea, you know where they are. You know them. They are your friends. Please, go carry and wait the keeper. Leave us with this small one so we can stay. Because the, what they are doing is affecting us now. But the reality, some of you may not know, is that the country has decided to change its currency. But they cannot find almost a trillion of what he put out. They are somewhere. It is somewhere. Nobody knows. Eh? I said, let them allow us to take our own because we have obeyed their order. They know where those people are. They know where they kept it. Let them go and settle it with them. But that is how it is. That's why I said has his own long term. So, mine is just to thank you and assure you, people, of my commitment in this project. People like Chris Garoba saying here today, I wonder how you'll be feeling. He was a military governor. Ike Wachuku told me that in their days as military governor, his security vote. Is less than one million naira. And he accounts to it to the chief of Jara staff. And he showed me a piece of paper where he was accounting for it. And we said the military were not good. They must go. Now security force runs in billions. So, and they say it cannot be accounted for. Only in Nigeria. Can you take public money and say it's not be accounted for? And I recall telling somebody a story that it was what was the man in my security board that I made a promise that nearly ran me out of town. One day, my SSG, you know, said, with the, with the, my 
Panse government has. That we have this amount of This amount of money remaining in security for so I made a mistake of saying that anybody who has first class in Alhambra State, I'll give him one million. When I was saying it, I had only about 40 something million, so I thought I was going to do my therapy. But within one week, I had 400 and something people who had first class, people were sending me from Australia from Japan, from everywhere. By now we know we had 500 and almost 600 people with first class. And the second the government works in and say, Peter, what are we going to do? I said, this was a public promise. So we have to go and find money to do it. I made the promise. You can't leave. All these people have first class. They'll show you your certificate. But... It was something that I found a public money. Okay, we can't account for it. But let's use it for something that benefits the public. And those 500 and something people, we gave that money. If I show you their letters today, you think I gave them billions. They were in different places, doing marvelous work. And we'll always remember, it was the money you gave me that this happened. It was money you gave me that this time. It was money that made me get PhD, made me do this. And I asked myself, if I had taken that money, would it have helped these people? What would I have used it to do? Maybe buy a drink. You know? So when you see people mismanage public resources that would have made a country great, that would have made other people's lives great, you ask yourself, what is it for? We put up a program, Lucky like Who is a Farmer, Uncle Bora's program, Art Gura's program. You go to farm, nobody is benefiting from it. So I don't know whether you've seen anybody who benefited from it. You know, small, small business loan. I went to Aba. How many of you received this? No. Went to Newe, because I live in Orange. I went to Lagos. Everywhere you go. Where are the small businesses that benefited? Yet it's in TV they are calling billion, billion. Yeah. This billion, maybe one day we'll go and look for it in TV. <laughs> That's what we want to change. We want this hard grass money to get to the farmer. So they can cultivate and be able to produce food. So Nigeria will not need our number one inflation problem today is food. And we have all the programs that will make it cheap. Except that we also have people who are determined it will never work. If you solve food in prison today, you bring in fridge within near single digit. And God gave us the vast land that no other country of the world can celebrate. We have the vast or cultivated land that can, the land in Nigeria today can give us more money than oil. Three, four times more money than oil. Free, fertile land. And we help us to create jobs because if we do what we want to do with agriculture, the revolution we want to control, that is what will propel the industries. That is what will propel the export. So you use it to feed the country, create job, spoil your industrialization, create job, lead to your export, which will stabilize your exchange rate. Because today, the reason why you have a work, the reason why you have bad exchange rate is very simple. 
You have no, your reserve is weak. Reserve is a function of export. You are not exporting anything. A country of 200 million people living on 923,000 square kilometers of land. Our total exports for 2021, including oil that God gave us free, is 18.9 trillion naira. At 650, less than 30 billion dollars. A tiny country, a tiny country like, a tiny country like Netherlands, tiny country, total land space without water, 33,000 square kilometers. So if we are to give them land and dash them land, out of our 923,000, we give them 33,000. We have 890 remaining. There are 17.4 million people. And we are about 220. Call it 200. So we give them 17.4 million people. We have 200 million people left. They produce for agriculture alone. Agriculture alone. Their export for agriculture in year 2021 is 120 billion dollars. That is four times what we earn in our overall export. Agriculture alone. No? Without, if you combine both agriculture and manufacturing, their export was about 650 billion dollars. But agriculture alone was one. 20 billion. Four times what we earn. We just ceded to them enough of their land, gave them enough of the human being they need. And we still have 200 human beings left. So that 200 human beings and the other land was unproductive compared with what they were able to do. And what we, we, we achieved with all this, you can go on and on. But there are people we can change it. Other small countries are like ours without doing anything. I was in Abba on Saturday and I said to them, it will shock you that Vietnam did more in footwear export than we did out with our oil. Our oil revenue was about between 15 and 18 billion, which again, we're not even sure. Vietnam exported shoe because when we say footwear, they would think that maybe they are exporting even somebody's uh, leg. But the, the wear, wear, so shoe, what you wear, you know, the leg is not included, it's just the wear. <laughs> they exported footwear of almost $18 billion. And we have 60,000 shoemakers in Haba. And I asked them, how many of you have government supported with all this credit that nothing every day? They said, nobody. That, in fact, that is me who is the first government. That they've seen government, they've come here, demonstrated, announced, and left. But to see what they are bringing. Bangladesh did clothing, 36 billion. This is not all you know. So they did more clothing than all our exports. 20% more than all our exports. They did it in clothing. We have tailors all over the place. We have so many of you who still want to sew and everything. Why is our own different? Because we do not have a government that shows direction. So that's why we want to go back Begging people like Professor Tommy, who have been in this for several years since I've known him, he has been on the complaint side. <laughs> you know, I've been in government. You know, I've been in government. Why I was saying, well, this person is talking to you, said, Don't mind that man. He's always been complaining since, <laughs> since I know him. <laughs> I've been in government and I've seen it happen. Oh, this man, look at what this man said. Leave him here. I don't complain. All his life, all he does is complain. Don't mind him. 
What is this saying? So, he has been on the complaint side all his life. Thank God today. All of you have decided to be on the complaint side. That's what actually will happen. Pastor Tommy and now have recruits on the complaint side. That is why what he's doing now is beginning to make meaning. Before he was alone, saying it and saying it and nobody cares. Like he said, until they shot in our leg. Now I came to our hips and we know this thing can kill you. <laughs> and we are now waking up to say enough is there. No. We had it. It cannot. And there's something he told you people. That the journey doesn't stop with winning an election. Remember, I tell everybody this. Don't say to Bori, we will it, we will solve it. No one person will solve this. That is when your job begins. Because we know what we do here. The man comes and talk and talk and talk and we elect him. Then he goes there. They start telling us what he saw when he got in. We don't want anybody to see anything different. What he saw when he gets in. And some people say, ah, there's a charm there. They charmed him. They did it. What are you talking? Absolute nonsense. Total nonsense. What is he talking? Absolute nonsense. I've been a governor for eight years. Who is charming you? If you don't charm yourself, you just went and brought out your true character. What are you talking about? <laughs> Absolute nonsense. Because we have a lot of of things here. I can tell you one of my best experience. When I wanted, you know, of course you know why I was impeached. But one of the experiences where I said is that when I, I looked at, one of the reasons why I was impeached, number one item was my office. There was a budget of 298 million naira to repair my office and change its furniture and everything. So I told the contractor, I told everybody that we don't have money. We are going to do it direct labor. And everything cost us 43 million, 200 thousand. But that don't we say, one of the things that, why I brought this chapter is that, is that the only thing I didn't buy new was table. Because I found out that a table used by Governor Banuju, the governor before Chris Ngigi and me, was lying somewhere. And I signed it, a very good table. And I said to him, ah, but this table is good. Why don't you call this man to polish the table? Someone said, no, 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 don't touch it. If you know what that man was doing, no, 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 no. He's very citizen. You don't know. There's people who use a lot of medicine. This is, I said, oh, God, this is table. Table is table. Let them polish this table. You know, if I go, I told him, I said, if I go to write, I told him, let's publish the table. If I go to write and you cannot write, then I will know that there's charm in it and I'll pursue. And then I'll go and find another person who will do my own. But bring this table first. Let's do this. I used that table for eight years. Nothing happened. In fact, the day he came and saw this, I said, it's your table. He said, it's true. I said, so, they tell you all sorts of stories. You know, please, there's nothing inside there. It is the people that bring out their true character when they go in. Which they just pretended. And then people say, he's a child. Nobody's doing anybody. And that is why you're being there after election is important. So that when the man starts to tell you, oh God, I beg, make you pack your con down. Make you know where I will go put another person. This is not what we hired you. You know, we have a destination. When we hired you as the driver of this vehicle, you are not the owner of this vehicle. We are owners and we are passengers in it. If you are not going to our decision, our destination, is it possible that you can come down so we can hire another person to go to that destination? Otherwise, it will be the same thing. We now voted Peter B. He goes there. When he comes here, he becomes his excellency. People are pushing us, slapping us, as if he's not the man we, we are. All of us were doing this thing yesterday. He has not turned into all animals are equal, but so I'm more equal than. No, we don't want it. All animals have to be equal now. Until we sort out this problem. 
I urge you. The reason why I'm doing this is that you tape it. Because me too, I'll be telling people I'm inside with. Oga, I told that story. Yes, sir. Today, they're launching a book on me, written by my chief of staff, Professor Stella Okuna. I didn't know Professor Stella Okuna. I never met her until the day she was sworn in as my commissioner. I, did, I never met her in my life. She became my chief of staff. And I always tell people, may God continue to give me chief of staff like her. Because for eight years, all I did with that woman was quarrel. She would always tell me, you're wrong. And I'll always mind that I'm governor. And she would say, and you say me, governor, sir, you're wrong. She will be, she's very polite with you. He will call me, your excellency, sir, and everything. You're wrong. <laughs> and that's what you need. That's why you people come into it. The governor, the president doesn't know everything. Anybody who knows everything is an idiot. Don't work with him. He needs to learn. Pat knows how many times I'm calling me at midnight and say, Pat, this thing that I'm sending to you, please correct it. I want to send it away. He knows how many times I'll speak him. And when they finish, I even call my daughter. My daughter teaches English. She'll send me, Dad, what type of English is this? I said, I, want, I send you to school in England. Me, I school here. So that's why you all will be there. But I don't have to have local mixture, local language and English. Miss, you're all, you, you only learn English. So correct it so I can post it to them. But what am I trying to say? You, your job is learning, listening, learning, listening. Because it is the people that own this project. Not me. They are the ones you are serving. So, I will stop my thanking you here. But I assure you that we are family. Do not look at those who may be, if we have one another to share, they are taking it. Leave them. In this family, we have those who are not genuinely believing in what we are doing. Let's not quarrel with them. I saw it when I was in, going to be governor in Anambra State. But those who believe in it, no. My, my, my vice, president, vice president and my brother, that was telling me this morning something. I said, that, let me tell you, this is the only project you know. That somebody have cheated you and you continue. Because if you go to, if you go to, fight for it, he has a high nuisance value that it can cause you trouble. So it's better let him. So here, yeah, that's what, but I can assure you, no snake will swallow money if I'm in charge. That snake. That snake will vomit it. Huh? That snake will vomit it. That I can assure you. Because all of you will be there. And once it happens, I say, this is snake, oh, you hold our money. And we're all chasing together until he gives it to us. I thank all of you. Please, in this last lap, do not give up, like Pat said. They are already telling you story. Oh, this thing you are doing is not going to work. Who is he? What is he doing? What the... They are now promising. We are going to fight corruption. We are going to do this. Let's go to where they passed through before. I know how many things that remained. Let's ask people about the appointment. Let's ask people because you don't corruption is not just stealing money. Nepotism is what form of corruption. When you put people where they are not qualified to be, we want people's talent in Nigeria yes, to match sir. up their opportunity. Yes, sir. We want people to carry a computer. This is the only country where you can laptop now. You're a criminal. How can? Laptop. These are things we want to change. I didn't come to give you political speech or how things, bad things are. But just know that this thing we're going through can be solved. Like Paul told you, somebody asked me, 
how are you going to pay the debts? Pat was there. Pat said they agreed one year. I told them three years. They insisted. One year. I said, no, three years. I said, the reason why I'm saying is that the way people are now, they don't have patience. If you say one year, three, six, six months, they say, oh, no, 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 no. We are not on the right road. Let this man go, go, because people have run out of patience. I don't think we have patience for another person to come and tell us story. The only story we want to do now is that there might not be 100% result, but we will not want to see 100% effort. Every day, we want to know that this man is working for us, or this woman. There's no story any longer. So I told him, I said, three years. But he might only consider one year. I said, no, no. I will submit myself to that. Because these people have run out of patience. And when people run out of patience, you give them. But I assure you that you will see it. It will be visible. Everybody will know we're in the right direction. Everybody will know we're doing the right thing. If you see us grow us, you will see them. So my dear people, in this last hour, go to the villages, go everywhere you can. We will do whatever we are going to do to support in this last lap. Be assured of our support. Be assured of our prayers. But above all, know that Peter B has told you, it is you that who owns this government. It's you that owns this project. Nobody can take it away from you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Our incoming president, the man of the moment, please, in deference and respect to Mr.